uh, to Jonathan Gullis, MP, for Conservative MP, of course, for Stoke-on-Trent. Uh, there's a breaking news uh, story. We've now got an answer from the government. Uh, Rishi Sunak says he fundamentally disagrees with the Court of Appeal conclusion on the government's Rwanda policy, but respects the court's decision. Uh, while I respect the court, I fundamentally disagree with their conclusions. Uh, he says Rwanda is a safe country. Uh, the High Court agreed the UNHCR have their own refugee scheme for Libyan refugees in Rwanda. As I said, we will now seek permission to appeal this decision to the Supreme Court. So more government money, more taxpayers' money down the drain. Uh, thanks to uh, Care for Calais, thanks uh, to the uh, the civil service union uh, and thanks to all sorts of other characters who think that uh, they can continue to remain to live in this country despite coming here illegally. Let's find out what Jonathan Gullis from Stoke believes. Hello, Jonathan. Yeah, Mike, how are you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, I'm pretty angry, actually, today. Um, I find this absolutely ridiculous. The fact that the, the PCS union was involved in this appeal as well is bonkers. The fact that this court of appeal seems to disagree with the UN, who think it's perfectly safe to send people to Rwanda, despite the fact that Rwanda and Visit Rwanda as a campaign sponsors Arsenal Football Club. You know, what the hell is going on? Well, like you, Mike, I was deeply frustrated and angry with the decision. I mean, as you perfectly point out, and well done for doing so, the UNHCR has 50,000 Burundi refugees registered in Rwanda working with their organisation. They yeah. did the deal, as you said, to take Libyans out of Libya and place them in Rwanda. Other countries have been able to use Rwanda, and the UNHCR has not battered an eyelid. Yet, for some reason, the United Kingdom, no, they shouldn't be allowed. They should be made to suffer because... We dare to do something brave and bold. We dare to do something that's seen as world leading. That other countries, even in mainland Europe like Germany, are looking at potentially copying because this situation has gone out of control. Millions of taxpayers' money every single day being wasted mm. to house people. And for those people at the Labour Party who think, oh, well, processing, we told you so, processing people doesn't stop people from wanting to try and come over the English Channel illegally. It'll only actually act as a pull fact if you continue to accept at the 7 in 10 rate that we're doing at the moment. So I think that the idea that the Labour Party is some privately cheering, although that I'm sure Keir Starmer will try and sit on the fence all day long because he doesn't want to try and upset voters who he thinks will be conned by his constant U-turns that he does. And I'm glad that the Prime Minister has said this will go to the Supreme Court. It's a shame it has to, and as you say, it's more taxpayers' money, it delays it even further. But if we need to go there to get this Court of Appeal decision overturned, then let's do it. And I... I want to thank the Lord Chief Justice for being brave, for standing up for what is right, for backing Parliament, for backing the British people, and for pointing out the fact that there are no returns agreements with some of these countries that the other two judges appear to be worried about, uh, 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 which led them to their judgment feeling that somehow Rwanda was an unsafe country. Right. Well done to the Lord Chief Justice. Yeah, I mean, at least it's not a unanimous decision. You say there may be something uh, to build on there. But the House of Lords has been having a crack as well last night, trying to sort of chip away at what it is that the government's bill seeks to do, which is basically to outlaw any interference from the ju judiciary. Because at the end of the day, a country that does not control its own borders isn't really... Uh, able to call itself a proper country, is it? Well, you're right, Mike. Look, let's not forget that the largest ever electoral mandate in history was in 2016, when people voted to leave the European Union, to take back control of our laws and our borders. The Conservative Party and MPs like me got elected because ultimately, in 2019, off the back of making sure that we would deliver on this promise, if we do not start to see major change, if we do not deliver on the Rwanda policy, which is just, let's, let's not forget, one part of a larger puzzle in terms of solving the illegal crossings in order to try and stop the boat, then we will face electoral doom. And sadly, we'll let a Labour Party in who, believe me, will have an open door policy. Mm. They'll clear the backlog by doing what they always do, which is have an amnesty. But they just won't call it that. They'll dress it up in every other way that they can do, and then we'll wonder why more and more people continue to come. Well, I mean, after this decision today, you can imagine the people trafficking uh, gangs are going to be cock-a-hoop. They'll be ordering up more dinghies even as we speak, because what they will say is that, look, this is gets, gonna, it's got to eventually get to a point where it all stops, but in the meantime, you know, bring it on. Bring on another thousand people. You can bring in a thousand a day if they want to. Well, as you say, Mike, the real concern here is that we're spending, what, over £6 million a day on hotels. It's projected projected this will go to 32 million pounds a day by the end of 2026 as you've been pointing out if we do not get control of this very serious problem that means more housing being taken up more hotels going people losing their jobs in the hospitality and retail sector school places being taken up and nhs is already overwhelmed 
further overwhelmed and put pressure onto it. This is why we need to make sure that we tackle this issue. And anyone who's trying to get in our way simply doesn't understand. They're more interested in getting likes on Twitter and trying to get a retweet mm. from Gary Lineker or Gary Neville rather than standing up for what the British people want, which is fairness in the system. Yeah. And that means you don't come to this country illegally. And also, whatever happens to the human rights of British people who are not here illegally, who are paying taxes, uh, who are subsidising these bozos, uh, government money going to some of these charitable organisations as well, you know, it's got to stop, surely. Somebody's going to have to stand up in Parliament and say enough is enough and actually stop giving out money to all these people. Well, I'm also worried about public safety, Mike, because as you and I have both said many a time before, we don't know who these people are. Documentation is getting thrown overboard as soon as they get into English waters. Yeah. Border Force themselves told me that when they get into English waters, they're making phone calls to 999 from the dinghies in order to make sure that they get picked up mm. and to get there quicker. You know, and ultimately, people are claiming that they're children. We know smugglers actively tell adults who may look a bit younger to claim they're a child. We don't know, have any proof of that. We're not using any of the laws under the National Heads and Borders Act to actually test bone density, for example, to check people legitimately are the age that they claim to be. So there's a real public safety element. And when we see on the front page of national newspapers that potentially ISIS is looking at committing tre mm. terrorist atrocities, they're going to be sending people via these small boats routes in order to undo untold harm to the British public. People like Stoke-on-Trent, North, Kids, Grevin, Talk, who time and time again have shouldered the burden for this country when they were part of the voluntary asylum dispersal scheme, have had enough and so have I. Yeah, I think so many people in this country have had enough. You've heard, if you've been listening to this show this morning, people, uh, phone call after phone call, people are sick to death of it and they want something done about it because people are now being affected by it on a daily basis. Every town and city practically in this country now has a hotel, at least one, being occupied by migrants. You know, places like Bournemouth uh, are, are, are seeing sites that they've never seen before. You know, but sheer numbers are changing Britain and it can't go on. Well, look, as I said, Mike, back to that public safety point, that terrible story of that young girl being raped by yeah. someone who had just come into this country not long ago. This is what I'm on about. This is why we need to do all we can to bring safety. As you say, make sure that communities are well looked after. Also, that damage isn't done to the hospitality, retail and tourism industry yeah. in Stoke. -on one of our hotels is directly opposite the railway station. That's a gateway to six million visitors mm. a year. Imagine what that looks like. That's right next to a levelling up project that I, with Jack Barrett and Joe Gideon, secured millions of pounds to redevelop an old industrial site to bring new hotels, new office space and new homes. But that's all going to be undermined by what's going on with these hotels. One of the other hotels in Stoke-on-Trent is where people were literally going to the gym to mm. get fit in one of the areas of the country which sadly has higher than average obesity rates. Mm. It's where people were going to learn to swim. It's where people had weddings booked. That's all been cancelled at the last minute because we're having to have these hotels taken up. I'm sick to the back teeth and of the lovey doveys on Twitter who think this is a win, who I'm sure will clip this mic and call us all names under the sun, mm. they need to get out of their little virtue signaling box and go and visit people in the real world and understand what on earth is going on to this country, which is people are willing to be fair, they're willing to be kind, but they also expect fairness. And that means making sure that you do things by the right way, not coming illegally and taking advantage of our hospitality. Well, the lefty love is best summed up by Glastonbury, aren't they, where they're all chanting and singing, uh, say it loud, say it clear, refugees are welcome here. Meanwhile, behind them, there's a bloody great fence which stops anybody coming in who doesn't have a ticket and hasn't paid 340 quid for the privilege. Uh, it's the irony that seems to escape them. Yeah, as you say, Mike, refugees are welcome to Glastonbury as long as they have £340. They can come in and they're able to sip on the champagne and, you know, virtually signal every opportunity. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the images of those wars cracked me up and the irony was not lost, I think, on anyone. Mm. If Glastonbury is, as you say, such an open event, if it is tackling what they see as inequality, then surely anyone and everyone could be able to turn up to where they hold it and we can all go and pop in and pop out as and when we please. Uh, if not then what are they doing? Yeah. And if not, why can they not support a decent and honest government trying to do the right thing for decent and honest people in this country who want to be able to walk down the street at night safely, who want to be able to book a hotel for their 65th party without being told, sorry, it's block booked for the next three years, who want to be able to get a house in the town in which they grew up, uh, not one that's been given away to somebody who's arrived here with four or five kids from Afghanistan. Well, this is exactly the point, isn't it? The pressures that are being put on public services, the cost to local authorities, when councils are already feeling the pinch, the social housing that's being lost when there's many people on the waiting list looking to move, the uh, impact on school places in particular, like places in Stoke. Stoke council taxpayers are having to bus some kids, I think, as far as Birmingham, yeah. from the last update I had from Stoke-on-Trent City Council, each and every day. That's a whopping cost to the local taxpayer. 
as well as obviously the further strain on local GP and, and mental health and uh, physical health services within the NHS. It's not right. It's not fair. And like you say, Mike, and your very sound listeners, it's time for this nonsense to end. And I'm just deeply disappointed the Court of Appeal didn't quite understand with two of those three judges that this is the will of Parliament, this is the will of the British people, the polling is all out there to prove it. The Rwanda deal is a world-leading deal. As you say, Rwanda is where many refugees are already hosted. They, are, they have no returns agreements with some of the awful countries that do commit atrocities against its people. So where on earth are they getting this idea that Rwanda is not a safe third country? Yeah. I don't know. He'd probably be talking to Jolian Moron. Uh, who knows? Uh, Jonathan, thanks very much indeed. Jonathan Gallis there, a Conservative MP for Stoke-on-Trent North.